Okay, so for number 15, one-to-one -one means that the function and its inverse are both functions. So I like to picture a graph for these. You could graph them in your calculator. Notice it says they can be calculator problems. So for 15, it's a line. So yes, that one is one-to-one. -one. 16 is an upside-down parabola. That is not one-to-one. -one. It doesn't pass the horizontal line test, meaning the inverse won't be a function. 17 is not one-to-one. -one. And 18, if you look at that in your graphing calculator and make sure to look zoomed in, um, okay, so you can see that it's more of this uh, shape, it's not one-to-one. -one. Now for 19, verify that they are inverses, we have to do f of g of x and g of f of x. So f of g is 7 times that fraction. So these 7s divide to 1, so I get x plus 6 minus 6, and we get x, which is what we needed. Now doing g of f, that's going to be 7x minus 6 plus 6 all over 7. We take this whole function and replace it in for this x, which is how I got this numerator. And now six, negative 6 plus 6 is 0, and we get x. So for 20, that's a multiple choice question. Which of the following is the inverse? This is y equals. So I'm going to switch my x and y and solve for y. So we're going to subtract the 5, multiply both sides by 3. So that's going to be 3x minus 15, which is choice D. We're going to use the same process for 21 x equals 9y minus 10. I'm going to add the 10 and divide by 9. So you can say x plus 10 divided by 9, or if I was going to graph it, I want to make sure I would know the slope and the y-intercept. So I would do the 1 over 9 as this coefficient, and then 10 over 9 as the constant. And now for 22, when you have a point on the inverse, the y and the x is switched from the original. So we're going to use that to graph 23 and 24. I find it easier if you make a chart of values of your original. So then that way when I switch them, It's easier to switch them just by looking, if you just look at your table. So that's one, that's three, one, two, three, four, five. That should be enough to get the general shape. So I've got, oops, it'd be easier to graph this way. So I've got zero, zero, now I'm going to graph the point 2, 1, and the point 5, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I'm going to keep the same shape. And there's our answer for 23. So now for 24. Let's see, this point is at... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's negative seven, two. Then we've got one, two, th negative three, four, zero. One, two, three, four, five. So let's see, if I switch those, I'm going to get the point two, negative seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, 
4, negative 3, 5, 0, I think I counted wrong. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Oh, this should be a three. So this point should really be at three, negative three, and then five, zero. And notice how there's arrows on both ends. So there is a sketch of our inverse. Okay, so for 25, I'm going to make a sketch for myself. Do that down here. The vertex is at negative 3, 4. That's an absolute value graph. So what modifications must the inverse be a function? So that means it needs to be 1 to 1. So if I only take half of my absolute value, let's say the, to the right, that's one modification. Another answer could be x is less than negative 3, less than or equal, because that would eliminate part of the graph, meaning then it would pass the horizontal line test. Okay, so now for 26 and 27, notice our graph is x minus 2, the absolute value of x minus 2. So the vertex for that is at 2, 0. And the vertex for this graph is at 0, 1. So to get the, the g function from the f function, we had to go to the left 2 and up 1. So then for 27, the vertex is at 3, 9, and we have this coefficient of 5. So what that gives us is a stretch of 5. And to the right 1 and up 9. Oops, that's a G. up 9. So if we compare, how do you go from 2 to 3, that's my right 1. And to go from 0 to 9, that's the up 9. Okay, so then for 28, for A, we're going to have any f of x function. So if it's reflected about the x-axis, that's a negative in the front. And stretched horizontally by 3 means we're going to multiply the x by 1 third. Now for b, reflected about the y-axis is a negative on the x. Down 5 is subtract 5 from the end. Oh, and I should be naming these, I'm sorry. Go back to A. That's now G of X. B is called H of X. And then for part C, this is going to be J of X. Uh, stretch vertically by 6 is a 6 in the front. Left 7 is going to be plus 7 on the X. And that's the only pieces for C.